Hey folks, today we're gonna be doing some cuttlebone casting. The cuttlebone, it's a part of the cuttlefish, and uh, it's more of an internal shell than actually a bone, but we call it the cuttlebone. And uh, I think the earliest reference that I could find in Western literature is on a book from the 16th century, but uh, they say in India and in China they have been using this basically since people have been casting things. It's a relatively safe way of casting and it's also said to be one of the easiest ways of casting. So let's get down to it. Since this is a how-to video, uh, first we need a safety disclaimer. So safety glasses and I wear a full on respirator but just a little bit dust mask will do the job for this. Also you're going to be dealing with molten metal and fire and very high temperatures so make sure you understand all the safety procedures associated with your equipment. Now let's get down to it. You can get cuttle bone at uh, jewelry suppliers, but I get mine from, from the pet store because they come in different sizes, also different thicknesses, and I like to see what I'm getting because usually I have a very specific project in mind for it. And I like to know what I'm getting exactly. And usually when you, if, you got, if you buy it online from a supplier, they just send you a bag full of stuff. So we need to prepare the cuttle bone first to use it as a casting mold. So we're gonna cut it in half and then we're gonna sand it flat. It doesn't take much to get it cut in half. Some people like to just rub both halves together. I like to use sandpaper. And it doesn't take much. It's flat enough on the other half. And that is flat. There are basically two ways to cast with cuttle bone. And the first one is you press usually a two-dimensional model into whatever of whatever you're casting into the bone directly and it leaves an impression. And uh, the other way is you cut the design uh, right away into the into the bone itself. Either way, they both need a sprue. For the, met for the molten metal to come in. I like to put the sprue first because this is a very delicate material and it's one less thing to go wrong. And it, as you can see, you can just carve it right away with anything. The bone is really delicate, really fragile. Since I'm currently on an Egyptian trend with my jewelry, I'm gonna make a little Egyptian ank. pattern. I'm just going to trace over. And now we carve it. You can use anything to carve into the cuttle bone, even toothpicks, but I find that dental tools tend to be the best thing ever. Or these could be also clay working tools. Another thing you want with the cuttle bone is that there will be gases generated from this. So you want to make sure it has some venting that takes the gases outside. Sometimes the texture of the bone is rough enough that it will do that job, but I like to cut some channels just to make sure it gets vented. Tie the mold closed just with a little piece of wire. Doesn't need to be too tight, in fact, you don't want it too tight, otherwise, it's gonna crush the cuttle bone. For casting, you want to put it in a safe surface. Many people choose to just put it in sand, 
I'm just gonna put in a little contraption here. The important is that it does not move once you're pouring the molten metal into it. We have it all done. Now we need some metal. Cuttle bond can be difficult to estimate how much metal you need. I'm gonna put some pieces from previous castings here. That should be more than enough. Put a little paper here so dust doesn't fall into the mold. You can open it right away after you've poured and it stopped glowing, but just be careful, it's going to be very, very hot. And there you have it, that's our quick little cuttle bone casting ink. And this one came out very rough because I just did a very quick rough carving. You can spend a lot more time and patience just uh, to make it look prettier. This is when you choose to carve the cuttle bone by hand. Another method that people use is to press things into the cuttle bone. So let's make a ring. Let's prepare another cuttle bone. To make a ring, the principle is basically the same. We're gonna need a sprue and we need a cavity for the metal to fill in the shape of the object we want to cast. But uh, in this case, instead of cutting it freehand, we're gonna be using a little mold. And in this case, it's just a plain, simple little brass ring that I'm going to press into the cuttle bone. Depending on the design you're working with, you're gonna want to press half of it into the cuttle bone in one half, and then the other half on the other side. This ring, since it's exa exactly the same thing on all sides, uh, I'm going to press it entirely just in one half. And it's just like this. You press it in. And there you go, you might need something to help you get it out. Have an impression. A good rule of thumb you want for the sprue is at least one third of the thickness of whatever you're casting. And in this case, we're gonna want plenty of venting. Yeah, I like to put a little bit of a sprue on the other side too just so it's more metal in there because this is a gravity casting. All you have to shove the metal down into the mold is basically the weight of the metal itself. So the more weight there is, better the chances that metal will flow in there. Same as before. And here's our ring. It's still very, very hot. And here they are, our cuttle bone ring and our cuttle bone ank. So a couple of thoughts on cuttle bone. I personally love this technique. It's so simple, it's so easy, and it's relatively cheap. You don't have to invest on machinery or equipment to actually get it started. It sometimes doesn't work. You might get voids into the, into the mold and you need to do it again. Molds, they cannot be reused. They are basically destroyed once you go through them, so you have to do it all over again. 
and uh, the items they come out looking a lot more rough than they would than they would of some other methods you need to do more finishing work unless you want the rough look but i absolutely love kettle bomb casting because it is so simple and it is also affordable which is always a good thing so that's it if you have any questions any comments please leave them below and see you next time